Well, hey, everybody, welcome to the Seeing Ability Podcast, where we're having a conversation about the world of people with disabilities. That means we're going to be talking to, in some cases, adults who were that kid who grew up with a disability, parents that are raising children with special needs, and the community that's supporting this, this population. So it might be folks working in nonprofits, maybe people in healthcare, doctors, therapists, or educators that are supporting persons with disabilities. Now, I'm your host, Jim Littlefield Dalmaris. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to us today. I know you've got a lot of choices when it comes to podcasts, so we really appreciate your time. If you're a past listener, you know I try to keep the episodes brief. That's always tough because we have some really interesting guests, but I'll do my best to keep us on track. I'm joined today by Willie Burton. Willie, welcome to the podcast. Hey, man. It's it's it, it's actually really good to be here. It's really good Thanks to be for here. Being here. And I'm going to start off like I do with all of our guests with what we call the fast forward, because even though we're talking about the world of people with disabilities, we're all just people. So I like to ask exactly. some questions. Now, we're lucky enough that the Fast Four is brought to us by the folks at Reliable Tech Help. It's an IT company. So for all your uh, IT needs, reach out to Reliable Tech Help. They're at 502-797-7399 or reliabletechhelp.com. That's tech with a K, not a C-H. So Willie, number one, what's your favorite junk food? Oh, man. If I had to pick one, I have a sweet tooth. So anything sweet, really. But if I have to narrow it down to one, I would... I, I would say brownies. That has to be my number one weakness is brownies. I like it. You're, that, that's your weakness, your kryptonite. Yeah. Right? Love it. Okay. Anytime you have brownies, I, I, I'm going to do whatever you want because, that, because, because, because that's my favorite. So. I love it. What about your favorite streaming show? Oh, man, that's tough. Uh, right now I'm really in uh, right now I'm really in New Ink Masters. I don't like I have a few tattoos myself and I just think it's really cool how they do the different tattoos. I know that's an older one and they have a lot of episodes. So I've been kind of watching that right now. I like it. What about if we were to see your playlist, what would be a song on it? A song? I don't it, it's kind of it's kind of hard because and this may seem weird, but I'm not as much of a music guy as I am like I'll, I'll have to listen to a bunch of a bunch of a, a, a bunch of podcasts about wrestling or about true crime or about a bunch of different types of things. But 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 uh, but most of all, I'll just listen to a good I'll, I'll listen to a good podcast at work. So well, you're, speak, you're speaking my language, Willie. We're on a podcast, so I'm never going to be mad at a guy who says my favorite thing is listening to podcasts. OK, and yeah. then, but not least on the fast four. If a limo pulled up right now and they were going to take you to an airplane and whisk you away for a, a trip, what what would be your ideal destination? I would probably want to go to. I would probably I would probably want to go to England actually because places like you know the Bahamas, like you know those are all beaches, so it's kind of harder for my chair to get around. So I probably want to go to a place like England. There you go, a trip across across the pond, as they say, to England. Yes, exactly, exactly. Well, I'm, a, I'm feeling a little starstruck because it's not often that I have guests on my podcast who have had an E60 ESPN special done about them. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But um, let's let's wind the clock back to your growing up years. Um, okay. For folks who have never met you, tell us a little bit about like your diagnosis, some of the things that you were challenged with on a day-to-day -day basis as a kid growing up. Okay, well, to begin with, I was adopted, but um, but but but. Uh, but like, but like, but, but like, um, uh, my birth mother actually had a, actually had a drug habit, and because of her drug habit, it it caused me to have a, a bleed in my brain when I was born, which caused me to have a terrible palsy, which affects my speech. It affects uh, the rice out of my body, and it basically just affects all my motor skills, like yeah. my ability to walk. Uh, and, it affects my right hand as well. So you've got the benefit now being, I was teasing you before we went on air about my gray and my beard and you being yeah. 27, you have the benefit of hindsight. Looking back, what are some of the things that you think your parents did uh, to raise you that helped you become the person you are today? Uh, one of the big things is, is they never told me I, I couldn't do anything. Like, like I, I never remember. I never remember them telling me, oh, you can't do that because you're in a wheelchair. 
I probably had a couple of crazy ideas, but they, but they, but they never made them feel crazy because they just made me feel like a normal guy. Like they made me feel like a normal kid who was having a normal life. You know, of course I had my, had my, had my, had my struggles growing up and I wanted to be, I, 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 I wanted to be out there playing basketball and I wanted to be out, out there like a normal kid. But as as far as my mom and dad go, like uh, they never made me feel like I couldn't do anything. So, wow, that's a, that gift. Was a big thing. Exactly. Uh, you mentioned uh, having struggles. Um, what what was something like maybe as a teenager? Can you think back to a time where it was particularly tough? And then uh, tell us a little bit about that. Especially through high school, that's the time where you're supposed to be, you know, transitioning and being able to drive on your own. And to go on dates on your own and hang out with friends and and, and with me being unable to drive and, 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 and you know and you know do things like that I, w- I was kind of lacking that uh, that you know independence that every teenager wants every teenager craves when they get that age be- because we think we know everything at that age and want to be left alone I couldn't really be left alone because I, because I need I, I need my help to, help to get from point A to point B or I need help to help to get my clothes on or whatever else. So I didn't really have that, have that privacy that, I, I, that every teenager wants, you know, I, I didn't really get a lot of that because I wasn't able to. Yeah. That's a really interesting dynamic. You hit it right on the head, that, that goal for independence. So what advice would you give to people listening who are parents of maybe younger kids? They're sitting there watching their kids go through these struggles. Exactly. How can they best support their, their kid, even though they're seeing them go through a struggle? I would say just try their, I, 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 I just try your best to not be too overprotective. Of course, be protective when you have to be. But I think in a lot of cases, I think moms and dads with kids with with disabilities, you know, you know, they tend to want to help them do everything and help them with everything, and, and they're kind of afraid to let them. Let them, you know, fall on their face because because they know they already have 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 all these hard times with life. So they just want to they just want to protect, protect, protect. But but just like anybody else, a kid has to grow, and a kid has and a kid has to mess up. So don't be afraid just because your kid I might be in a wheelchair or have a physical disability. Like don't be afraid to let them you know try new activities or mess up or fall. Or whatever else you just have to have had to have to let them grow up uh, just like anybody else. Yeah, you said earlier on, you know, my my parents just had me be like a regular kid, and part of being like a regular kid is learning from mistakes, right? Being exactly. able to being able to learn not just how to fall, but how to get back up. Yes, exactly, exactly. And I think for a lot of people, people they they actually think that they're doing good when they when they prevent like the bad thing from happening because 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 you're in a wheelchair or have a disability they think like oh i'm doing a good i'm doing a good i'm a i'm i'm a, i'm a, i'm a, i'm a thing here because i'm keeping them away from the hurt but sometimes the hurt's good you know sometimes yeah yeah it's it's a natural instinct to want to step in for any parent and then like you said if you see my kid has extra challenges. The last thing I want to do to see him suffer more. But I, what you're saying is hold back. Don't step in. Let them, you know, like you yeah. said, step in when you need to safety first, but otherwise yeah. let them, let them stretch a little bit because that's where they're going to grow. Exactly. Yes. That is that you well, you know, and, and one of the things that you chose to do as a teenager probably was really hard for your parents because you developed a love. You talked about basketball and other things, but it wasn't basketball that was your number one love. And that's where E60 came in down the road. Tell us what drew you to and tell us about your journey in the world of wrestling. Oh, well, here's the worst thing about wrestling. Everybody always asks me, like, well, well, I, you know, what drew me to it? And honestly, I, I don't really have a moment where it just all clicked. But I just remember going to a freshman orientation and they had the different uh, 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 sports on the wall. And, and one of the sports was wrestling. So I went over and I picked up the brochure and I was looking at wrestling and stuff. And I remember at the time, the guy who was, who was the athletic uh, a director of the school, he was like, he was like, are you sure you want to wrestle? That's a tough sport. And he was t- telling me all the reasons I couldn't do it. And I, 
I just thought it was weird because if I had been a normal kid, you know, and, 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 and coming up and asking about wrestling, like, you know, would he have, 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 have been, have been so quick to be like, Oh, maybe you should trust something different. So, so the fact that he was kind of trying to, I, I mean, you not do it. It kind of, it kind of made me want to do it more in a way because it's like, he really thinks I can't do this. Like, so after yeah. he told me all the reasons that, I, that I, I couldn't do it, I went and I talked to the coach and he told me as long as I passed the physical, I was in. So, the, so that's all I was worried about. It. After that, I was like, I, I have to do it at this point. So it made you even more determined because it, it sounds like you've got that personality that if somebody tells you you can't do something, you're going to want to do it even more. Exactly. Exactly. I love that. So when you started doing it, what made you keep going? What did you love about it? What I loved about it is, is on the wrestling mat, it doesn't matter I'm in a wheelchair. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how, how, how like, every walk of life, I can, I can see people in wrestling, and it doesn't matter. Because once you're on the mat, you're a wrestler. It doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair. It doesn't matter if you're white. It doesn't matter if you're black. It doesn't it, it doesn't matter. Once you're a wrestler, uh, then you're just a wrestler. So it was just like it was just like competitive. It was just like competitiveness in wrestling, and how it was like how it was like me against the other guy, and like, and the thing I liked the most about wrestling, honestly, is just my teammates. You know, it wasn't even really the competition. It was just it was just being there every day with my every day with my teammates, and you know, having good times with them. Yeah, that's what really going. Absolutely. Now, for those who haven't seen the E60 special, uh, Dan Gable, very famous wrestler, narrates it and talks about your journey. And one of the things he mentioned is how hard you tried, but you're, you had a lot of matches where you were defeated. A lot of people would have just given up, you know, and would have said, hey, this is too hard. So what was it that kind of kept you going in, in those several years of trying your best, but not getting a victory? Um. I would say that it was it was mostly, as I said, my teammates and my coaches. Just every time I had a match, it wasn't like, oh, oh, we know Willie's gonna lose, so we're not even gonna coach him. We're not even gonna, even even gonna encourage him. It's okay because he's in a wheelchair. It doesn't matter. Like, like they never made me feel that way. They always made me feel like I had a, I had a chance of winning every time I went out there, and it didn't matter if I won or lost. You know, like my teammates were gonna cheer up. I, I were going to cheer me on and, and my coaches were going to like, you know, tell me what to do and everything. It, it wasn't like, it wasn't like they ever ex expected me to throw in the, in the towel. I just, because I was in a wheelchair. So they always held me to a high expectations. So I helped, so I held my, so I held myself to a high expectation. Yeah. I love that. That So, so if you have to think back from your years in wrestling, what do you think it taught you about yourself? It taught me that I. It taught me that I have no quit. It taught me that the once I put my mind to something, I, I, that I'm going to, 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 to accomplish. Like you know, whatever my goal is, you know, whether that's in wrestling or in in a job that I want, or it doesn't matter what it is. It just it 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 it, it just said, let me know that I have, I, I have a passion within me that, I. And, you know, once I want to do something, and, 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 and you know, that's it. I'm going to do it no matter what. I love that. I love that. And your story uh, kind of led to the documentation of your story with um, you being involved with a biography, with a book, The Heart of a Lion. So tell us about that. And, and what was that like to, to have a book written about you, do book signings, be a, a, a little mini celebrity here in town? Uh, well, the book kind of came after the documentary. It, it, it was just kind of through. It was just kind of through. It was kind of through word of mouth, you know, that I that uh, that it all happened. It was a crazy ex experience, just because I thought after the ESPN video, like you know, I would have my have have have, have my fifteen minutes, as they call it, and then, and then you know, I, I would go back and just and just kind of live a regular life. But once they approached me about a book idea. I thought that was a really cool way to to reach people who who you know may not be into wrestling or or, or you know may not watch ESPN, so they may have not heard about me. But but 
but they enjoy reading a good book. So they might, like, you know, pick up my book. And if they can pick up my book and it gives them a little bit of encouragement, then, then you know, that's what I'm hoping for. That was fantastic. And you, and I know you, I remember when the book first came out, you did a book signing at a location, the Kids Center in Louisville, where you got a lot of support growing up. What was that like to be able to uh, give back to them? And, and, and what, what were, who were some of the people that played a role in your development outside your parents when you were growing up? Um, having my book signing at the Kids Center was huge just because it gave me the opportunity to like, uh, to go back to where I came from and just kind of the memories of all the physical therapy. Uh, my physical therapist, uh, my Jamie Ramsey was huge in my development. He was my therapist from the time I was about one years old all the way up until until I was in middle school. So she, she was with me for a long time. So, so talking to her and just all the, and just all the people who were who involved with the kids and her, like, you know, they I go above and beyond with their kids and as far as helping them have a better quality of life. So, so without them, I think that's really where my a determination, like, you know, really sprouted up. It wasn't like in wrestling. It was it was through all the countless hours of, of having to do physical therapy and speech therapy and all these other types of, of, of physical therapies, you know, having to do that. But I, 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 I can, I, you know, basically every day I basically was at physical, at physical therapy as much as I was home. So for me, the, so for me, the kids, so for me, the kids center was kind of like a home. You know, yeah, so. Absolutely. So way before the, you were, uh, got into wrestling, I guess you were having your own workouts and your own personal okay. trainer sort of that was driving you just like a coach would right exactly yes all my all my physical therapists like i said especially jamie would just really would just really push me to uh, to not only uh, to work out but just to have a better quality of life you know so it it, it really helped me because unfortunately like you know a lot of kids who have these operations on their backs and their hips like i did you know they have these operations and then they don't have the resources to continue to work out, you know, after they have these operations and then they, and they wind up in, in a worse um, a situation than they were before. And, and, and they were, than they were before and they lose uh, uh, their ability to crawl or to walk on a walker. But like I said, with the kids center, like, you know, constantly, constantly having me work out, you know, it really helped me to, have a way better quality of, of, of life than I would have otherwise. So, well, awesome. that's really good to hear because I know it's, it can be hard to take your kid to all these appointments and, and therapies and different things like that. But it sounds like, you know, in the long run, they really, that early intervention yeah. really does make an impact. It was hard, but it was, it, it, it was like definitely worth it for sure. It was definitely worth it. Now, you're not only involved in one book, but you were kind of the inspiration or subject of a children's book. Tell us a little bit yeah. about that. Uh, that's uh, Willie A.S. A.S. Hooper friend. I didn't have a hand in actually writing that. As you said, I was just the inspiration for that. And what that book, at its core, that book is just about accepting people, no matter who they are, if they have a disability, if they're a different color, if, if they have a different like like I, I can have background than you, it's just about uh, just remembering that that people are just people, and ex exposing kids uh, to kids in wheelchairs or kids with a different background at an early age can really help 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 with their help help with their development as an adult. So, what a great idea! So Willie, a super friend, is the title of the book. So par parents of kids with special needs, like you said. That representation, having stories that have people that look like them, that have similar journeys, that would be a great recommended book for anybody out there that has a kid uh, with a disability. I, I, yeah, because as a kid, I never had that representation. I didn't see people in books or movies or anything who, who were in wheelchairs. I, I never had that had that person who I really looked up to, like, you know, growing up because, of course, I can't. Like, you know, dribble the basketball down the court, or I can't throw the football. So it was harder for me to look up to these, like, you know, sports heroes. So I, I didn't have anyone to look up to as a kid. So I'm hoping that with this book, a kid can have, have, have I can have somebody to, to look up to. 
So you've got kind of a stair-stepped approach. When they're young, we can have them read the kid's book, uh, Willie, a super friend. Then when they get a little bit older, they can read Heart of a Lion, and that can inspire them. Yeah. Willie, it yeah. sounds like we're going to have to have a third book that's about your adult life to be continued. Yeah. Right? The, the story is still being written, right? I mean, hey, I can, hey, I can, hey, I can co-write it with my wife. Who knows? Well, that's a good segue, man. Willie, you set me up there. Earlier, you talked about teenagers and them wanting to have independence, and you just kind of casually threw in their dating and stuff like that. And you happen to not only be an old man now at 27, you're an old married man. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you met Lizzie and uh, just kind of what she means to your life. Oh, well, that's kind of crazy because we met at the craziest time possible. It was right in the middle of the, it was right in the middle of the pandemic, you know, everything. And we actually met online and everything. So we, so we started our relationship online. And then, and then once we were able to, we had a couple of dates and it was really nice. Um, but, but the big thing with her is, is, is we make a good team, you know, because because he's the back because he's the backbone of this whole relationship like he's the one that makes this and makes this whole thing work like without her I, I would be lost but like it's it's just crazy to me to think that I went from just you know being at home like you know during the pandemic to just a randomly sending a message one day and here we are you here we are. 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 Here we but you just won the hearts of all female listeners out there. That's a smart man giving credit to his wife. Yeah, 100%. 100%. What did they say? I think there's a quote, happy wife, happy life, something like that. There has had never been a more true quote than that. So if you were brought in, and I know you've done, tell me, but you've had a chance to do a little bit of speaking to groups. I know you're doing that. What is the, the message that you're getting out there either to kids or to parents when it comes to traveling this, uh, this journey? I, I just a message of hope, just a message of, 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 of no matter what you're going through, whether it's a physical disability, mental disability, uh, you lost your job, I, you know, whatever it might be. I just hope to, hope to spread a message of spread a message of hope, because especially in, in, in today's world, I feel like the goal is to make everybody afraid or to make everybody uh, ups- and to make everybody upset about like. Oh, the world's all going downhill. But I want to be, I want to be that hope to say, oh, the world might be going downhill, but, but we still got a, we, but, 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 but we still got a few good, but we still got a few good people out there. You know, that's what I'm hoping for. That is an awesome message. So, if folks wanted to uh, get a hold of you, maybe they've got a group and they'd like to bring you in to speak to them. How do they reach just, you? Just contact me. Uh, I'm up, uh, I'm up through my email, which is which is which is which is which is, which is uh, Willie uh, Ky two. Uh, gmail.com and just and just send me an email and then I'll 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 get back to you as as quick as I possibly can. Willie KY2 at gmail.com. Oh yes sir, yes sir. Fantastic. Okay. I always like to sometimes end with what I call the three keys. Let's imagine you are brought in to speak to a maybe it's at a hospital and they've got some parents who maybe recently had kids born in the NICU. They're kind of facing an uncertain path. You're up there podium speaking to them what do you think you would say are your three keys to success in raising a kid who has some sort of extra challenge a uh, number one you can't be too you can't be too you can't be too hard on yourself because because raising a child is going to be hard if they can walk oh, 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 or they're in a wheelchair so so like just uh, don't be too hard on yourself at the beginning especially because you're just trying to figure it out you know I know, but like with all the doctors' appointments you're gonna to have to have, it can be overwhelming. So I would say, I would say number one, if you're with your partner, just just you know actually be there for your partner. 
help them, encourage them, because I think a lot of parents, like when they have a child, they have an idea of, okay, this, this child's going to grow up and have a career and, and all this. And, and once you get the news that your, that your kid's going to have a physical disability, like your mindset has to completely flip and say their life is going to look completely different. So just give yourself some, so give yourself some grace. I, I, I would be my number one. My number two would be just, as I said, I, as I said earlier, just as they grow and as they get older, just I, I, I give them the opportunity to kind of kind of spread their wings. But as far as I like when they're I I I, I when they're kids, I, I just try your best to give them as as like normal of a as like normal of a childhood as you possibly can because like you know they're already going to feel different. Uh, they're already going to feel isolated. So uh, what you can do as a parent is just is just is just try small things to make uh, to make them not feel so isolated. Fantastic. Well, Willie, it has been awesome catching up with you for a while and uh, sharing your story with our listeners. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, no problem. It, it was actually really cool. I've never done a I've never done a podcast before, so this is my first one. I have a feeling this won't be your last. So for our listeners, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we're trying to get the message like Willie shared today, uh, hope, inspiration. Uh, to more people. So you can help us by going to our podcast Facebook page, uh, giving it a like, giving it a follow, and then sharing this episode on whatever platform you use, whether it's YouTube or any podcast platform, share it with those you know. If you're part of a group, maybe a mom's group, different organization that's out there in different communities of folks challenged with disabilities, we'd love to have you get this information out because our goal is, again, to provide a little bit of education hopefully some motivation and inspiration, and most importantly, that sense of community. We want people to connect here in this space listening to this podcast. So Willie, thanks for being here today. Folks, thank you. We'll see you next time.